Hello everyone, I hope that you're doing well. Today we are doing a general science paper two past paper review, and this paper was from the year 2022. Please remember, before you start the examination, you should always write your school number, your candidate number, your initials, and also your surname. Please remember to read through the instructions carefully as well. And if you should have any questions or queries, please clarify those with the examiner before the examination begins. Now let us jump into question number one. And question number one reads, study the diagrams carefully and answer the questions which follow. Look at all the organisms in the pictures, write the name of the kingdom to which they belong on the lines provided. And so for the first one, we have bee, snail, spider, human, and they are all animals, so they belong to the kingdom Animalia. Yeast and mushroom, they are fungi, all right, so they belong to the kingdom fungi. Paramecium, euglena, and amoeba, they are all protists, so they belong to the kingdom protista. Now, we have the E. coli, which is a bacteria. We also have the staphylococcus, and is also bacteria, and so they belong to the kingdom bacteria. Now, for the last kingdom here, we have lily, rose, and pine, and they are all plants, so they belong to the kingdom plantae. If you put plants, you will still get your mark. All right, so they are plantae kingdom. All right, so part B, it said the human and the spider belong to the same kingdom because they're animals. It's a give one difference between the human and the spider. And so I have two differences right here is that one, the spider has more legs and they have technically eight legs. And human beings now, they have less legs. And of course, we have only two legs. All right. Um, for spider, they have um, body segments and they have two body segments, the head and the abdomen. And for human beings, we only have one body part. So in other words, we are one complete thing. So we have no segments at all. All right. For part C, it's that the rose and the pine belong to the same kingdom. It's that what is the, what name is given to the specific class to which they belong. And so rose is a flowering plant. And so specifically, it is a dicotyledon. Pine is a non-flowering plant. Specifically, it is a gymnosperm and it's a conif um, conifer because it produces um, cone with seeds. Now for part D, it said the spider and the bee belong to the same phylum of invertebrates. Name the phylum and they are arthropods. All right, so they are arthropods, which means they have exoskeleton or art covering. For question number two, it said this question is about mixtures. It said substances are separated from a mixture using different methods is a match the method of separation to its description by writing the letter of the method on the line next to the description. So here we have the description and the method on this side. And so let's run through them real quickly. And so for the first one, it's a separation, separating iron filing from sulfur. Sul um, iron is a metal, sulfur is a non-metal. And so using a magnet, so magnetism is the best option here. Because the iron will be attracted to the magnet, but sulfur will not. And so obtaining pure water from salt water. So if you want to get the pure salt, a matter of fact, not pure water, but pure salt from salt water. To get the salt, you're going to evaporate the water. So you're going to use here evaporation technique. And to obtain the pure water from salt water, you're going to use distillation. And so distillation will cause the water to evaporate and then condense. And you can collect the water at the end of the distillation apparatus. For the last one, it's the separating different colors, ink in a pen, and you use here the chromatography. And matter of fact, it's called paper chromatography. All right, so for part B of this question, it's a name the method of separation shown in the diagram, and this is the diagram they're talking about here, and this is a filtration. It's the underlines provided label the parts of the diagram, and so the broken line is the filter paper, all right, the, the, so the filter paper here is rest into the filter funnel. And what we get out as the liquid that is shown here, it is known as a filtrate. What will remain on the filter paper will call the residue. All right, for example, sand or soil. All right, part C of this question. is a student uses the apparatus shown to separate a mixture. 
And here we have a lid, we have the paper, we have the start line, we have the solvent. And let's go to the question. It's the numbered statement shown um, describe how the apparatus should be set up. Two of these um, statements give incorrect information about um, on how to set up the apparatus. So we have two statements that are incorrect. And so here are the statements that the paper does not touch the beaker, and that is true. It said the start line is drawn in ink. It is not safe to draw the start line in ink. Let me just go back to the diagram. You see what I'm saying? So the start line, which is this line run across here, these dots, they are ink, but the start line should not be ink. Uh, the start line, you should use like pencil because if you use ink, then what will happen, the ink will also dissolve and separate in different colors as well and could interfere with the dots or the dots of ink. And so for three, it said the water level is above the start line. No, it should be below the start, the starting line. And so the and so the water or the solvent that you use will eventually climb up onto the paper. All right, it's a use a lid on the beaker. Yes, you can use a lid on the beaker, that's fine. Use water as a solvent. Water can be used as a solvent. And a point to note, it depends also on the type of ink. Um, you have the permanent markers, you, gener you generally use like alcohols for those. Um, if you're using like um, dry erase markers, then you can use water for, for those. So water can be used as a solvent. All right, so let's go to the next question. Question number three is that the pictures show renewable and non-renewable sources of energy. And so let's, you can look at the diagrams carefully to study them and know which one is which. So we have coal. This is a nuclear plant right here. They must put a little light, a light right there. So this is a nuclear um, plant. This is a tree right here all right and we have here is a solar panel and here we have oil and we have windmill and we have coal all right so let's jump into answering the questions now and so for a is to identify two non-renewable sources of energy in the picture and we have coal oil and we have nuclear energy as well so there are three but they say identify two so that is also fine all right, for part two is to give a reason why one of the sources identified in A1 is described as non-renewable. And so it is non-renewable because it's difficult to be replaced. For example, oil, it takes a very long time, many years for you to replace oil. All right, and if you use the nuclear, they're going to take a long time to bring back those atoms. All right. Um, for part B, and part B1, it said identify two renewable sources of energy in the pictures. And we have the windmill and we have the solar. And for part two, it's to give one advantage of using renewable energy. And renewable energy has little to no pollution. So pretty much there is no pollution, really. And the next advantage is not easily depleted, which means it will always be there. All right? So it is not going to run out at all. All right? So you don't have to worry about it going to go away like the sun. It will always be there. All right? The wind will always be there. Part C, it said name the energy source used to provide electricity in homes in the Bahamas, and that will be oil, uh, specifically crude oil. All right, and then that will refine into gasoline. It said identify another energy source that can be readily available in the Bahamas, and that is solar. All right, solar energy is here. It's a tropical country, and so you always have the sun. It's a state two reason why this source may not be used by the majority of um, residents in the Bahamas. And so to use solar energy, it's the initial cost to set it up is really high. So it's, a expen it's really expensive. And so high initial and installation costs. So that's one of the things that people may not have the money to start to start with. However, in long term, though, it will, it will be cost effective. Um, the lack of knowledge, they don't know how to do it or where to get the, the materials to do it, or who to go to to actually install it for them. Um, and next reason may be the energy need to be stored. So they need to have some storing device like batteries. And so the batteries also are expensive. All right, so there are a number of reasons why they may not go that route. And again, um, the convenience of electricity may prevent them from actually using the solar. All right, for number four, is that what causes sound to be produced, and that is vibration. For part B, is a use your knowledge of sound waves to fill in the blanks in the following statements. And so frequency in sound waves produce pitch, while amplitude in sound waves result in loudness. 
All right, so you need to know that the frequency, the pitches depends on frequency, while, while the loudness of a sound depends upon the amplitude. All right, for part C, is to label the parts of the sound waves indicated by the letters A and B on the lines provided. And so A, which is the height of a crest, which is the same thing as the depth of a trough as well. And so this is called amplitude. And now the, where B is pointing, that is the crest. All right, so the highest point on the wave or the, it's called a, a crest, and the lowest point we call a trough. All right, for part D, it's a student conducted the experiment shown in the diagram. And it said, which bottle will produce the sound with the highest pitch? And so this question here is kind of a wide question. It's not specific um, because there are two scenarios that you can produce high pitch. Um, if you're blowing, then bottle one will be the highest pitch. And if you're knocking or striking the bottle itself, then um, number six will produce the highest pitch. All right, so it really depends on what you're doing. So, so the blowing compared to knocking the bottle is two different things, all right? So by blowing is number one, and by tapping the bottle or knocking the bottle with, or striking the bottle with a piece of uh, metal or a stick, then number six will be the highest pitch. All right, so let's go here now for part two. It's a given explanation for your answer in, in D1. And so here I'm going to explain um, the two scenarios. And so when blowing, the bottle with the most water has the least amount of air. So when you blow across the top um, or the top of the bottle, um, you're making the air inside vibrate. So in bottles with less air, vibration, vibrations are faster. So the pitch is also higher. All right. And that's why um, number six will be the highest one. If you're tapping the bottle now, which is the next um, option here. So the bottle with the least amount of air when tap will produce the highest pitch. And the reason for this is because not much water is there to, to interfere with the vibration of the bottle. So less water in the bottle, only the bottle is vibrating. But if water is in the, in the bottle, then the bottle plus the water will have to vibrate. And so then um, the one with less water will produce um, the highest pitch. And so notice this notation in red right here. It's by, by adding water, the bottle and the water have to vibrate, which cause the vibration to be slower, resulting in a lower pitch. So less water means that you have more energy or vibration going to the bottle. Hence, you have a higher pitch. All right, so I hope that was clear um, in terms of explanation between the two scenarios. Now for part E, it says what is the quality of a sound? And the quality of a sound is really the characteristic of sound wave that distinguishes sound with the same loudness and pitch. So once you have a sound wave with the same loudness and pitch, what do you use to differentiate both of them is the quality. All right? That's what we call the quality of sound. All right, number five. And number five is to use a diagram of the carbon cycle to match the letters with the processes. And so we have a lot of processes going on right here, but you can see them carefully and see what's happening here. So again, I will um, ask you to pause right here, make notes of the diagram and the letters. All right, and then let's go back to the processes. And so process B is, is combustion. And let me just um, go here to show you what combustion is. So you have fossil fuel, and when you burn fossil fuel, you get carbon dioxide in the atmosphere, so that is definitely combustion um death um death will be h and um i um so plants will die animals will die and you have the dead materials um coming from the living organisms now feeding is where you see arrow moving from one organism to another and so feeding here could be d um the animal eating the plant all right so d is feeding um uh, I, I made this mistake. This is supposed to be D. Feeding is D. So it's not E. All right. So feeding, again, animal eating the plant. So the arrow moving from the plant to the animal, that's definitely um, feeding. All right. So let's go to the next one now. Um, photosynthesis. And it is carbon dioxide going into the plant. So A, carbon dioxide going into the plant which is photosynthesis. And then we have respiration. And respiration is carbon dioxide leaving any living organism. So F will be our respiration from animals and plants. Animals do, do respire. Plants do respire. 
Matter of fact, all living things respire. All right, so F is the correct answer there. For part two, it's a name one of the raw materials needed for respiration. And respiration, you can either have, have glucose or oxygen. All right, and um, glucose is needed for aerobic respiration. Um, glucose now is needed for any respiration. All respiration use um, glucose, but only aerobic uses oxygen. All right, so let's go to part B of this question. It says, diagram now shows the water cycle. And so again, you can study the diagram carefully to make sure you understand the questions that are going to come up now. It says, name the process occurring at X and Y. And X is when water leaving the pond, going up in the atmosphere, so that is evaporation. All right, and process Y is, let's go up to the top right here. Process Y is when it's going into the clouds, so that is condensation. For the next part of the question, is to give two reasons why water is important to the body. And there's a number of reasons why water is important to the body. And a matter of fact, the body is a, lot, a great percentage of the body is water. So even for that reason alone, water is important. So water helps to transport, um, transport up dissolved substances. Um, water helps to remove waste, such as urea. Water helps to cool the body and to maintain body temperature. Water aids in digestion. Water aids in lubrication of joints because the synovial fluid has a large percentage of, of um, water. Maintains the health of cells. And so the general health of the body is dependent upon water. All right? And water also helps to prevent constipation as well. So that could add that one as well. So there are so many reasons. All right, so let's go to number six, which is the last question. It says, diagram below um, represents the digestive system and some important organs. And so... I have provided the labelings here. Double is esophagus, um, stomach, pancreas, small intestine, and um, this structure here is U, which is liver. Um, U, a matter of fact, is based on a question that is asked. So I will go back to the question now. All right, so it's a name of parts labeled W, X, and Y. And so we have esophagus, stomach, and pancreas. Again, you can go back to the diagram. And for B, it said a series of wave-like muscle construction contractions move food through the digestive tract. What is this process called? And it's called peristalsis. It's a name and organ where the process in B1 occurs, and it occurs in the esophagus and also the small intestine as well. All right, so it occurs in the intestine and the esophagus, but, it, but the most popular part you see on most exam will be the esophagus. Now for part C, it's a where does the digestion, um, where does digestion begins and end, and digestion begins in the mouth. And there are two types of digestion starts in the mouth. You have mechanical digestion, which is chewing, and you have chemical digestion of starch, and that's why you release saliva amylase. So all digestion, well, digestion generally begins in the mouth, all right, and it ends in the small intestine. The type of digestion taking place in the small intestine is um, chemical, all right. And for part D, it's on the diagram. On the diagram, draw a line to the liver and leave it to you, which we, which we already done. So I could just go back to show you the liver here, which is you. All right, so I know you have seen that before, so we are good at that. Uh, next part of this question. All right, so the last, last thing is that explain the role of the liver during digestion. And it's a during digestion. So the, the, pros, the, per, the function of liver here is really to produce bile. So, so liver produces bile, and bile is needed to emulsify fats, which means that it breaks down fats into what you call fatty droplets. All right, so this is the end of the review, and uh, thank you for watching, and I wish you luck on the, examination and, uh, on the examinations, and please, um, if you haven't done so yet, please subscribe and share with your friends as well, and listen out for more reviews. Talk to you soon.